I don't know what it was like for you growing up, but I spent most of my childhood hating my body. In a culture oversaturated with images of wafy girls, where were all the curvy women like me? I spent my teenage years obsessively dieting, eating under 700 calories a day in the hopes that I could one day slide into skinny jeans. While I would temporarily succeed at losing 15 pounds, I lost myself in this empty ideal of beauty. In the 80s, I was working as a fashion stylist. What I loved about my job was to uncover the raw, the undiscovered, and the authentic. However, over the course of 20 years, the industry, which once supported me in celebrating fierce individuality, was turning into a machine churning out one prescribed surface image. I had to fill the frame with the same five luxury brands, the same five celebrity faces, and one exclusive ideal of beauty. I realized that those same magazine covers that I was styling were destroying my daughter's self-esteem. So I ditched my styling career, and I threw away my skinny jeans, and Style Like You was born. In 2009, we picked up a home video camera and began to document the authentic style that was being submerged by the mass media. We were transformed by the depth behind each of our subjects' self-expression. Their identities extended way beyond their clothes. We started this from pure passion. We had obviously no um, expertise in, in, in most things other than seeing the beauty in people. That is what we're good at. We see the beauty in people and we thrive on seeing the beauty in people. It became clear to us that your style is more than what you wear. Your style is your story. To further explore this, we began asking people to take their clothes off. With each layer of clothing removed, a new truth came to the surface. We called it the What's Underneath Project. First of all, this is the first time I've ever told my story. You know, everyone would joke around with me, oh, she's anorexic, she's anorexic. But I couldn't see it. My mom took action. How much did you weigh when your mom took action? 93 pounds. So since January, I've gained about 30 pounds. Each person, like us, had once felt that they were lacking something that kept them from feeling beautiful and whole. I was with a man for six years. We never went out. So, you know, I asked him a couple more times, and he finally said, that you're, you're too old, I don't want to be seen with you in public. I struggled a lot when I was younger, like, I'm diagnosed with body dysmorphia, like, with, like, reading this, like, stupid fucking tabloids, and I was, like, 13, with feeling like I was just, like, ugly, like, always. If I had hair, everything would be better. If I had hair, I would have the boyfriend. They already knew when I was born, they were like, we're going to make so much money off of this baby because she is going to work weeds and she's gonna go to salons to try to look like drop any actress. People would shout things at me about my body, I was like birthing hips, any range of faggot, nigger, titty boy, whatever. There was points where I was throwing up uh, like 13 times a day. And I was like a size six. I was considered the Caucasian kid and I'm not even I'm not even Caucasian, I'm black. I didn't know how to see my own body. I felt like left out of this whole realm of what it means to be a woman. It's almost like I am a art exhibit or an alien. It finally just sort of came to a head when I was 17 and I attempted suicide. What's Underneath quickly became a stage for healing and catharsis, for our subjects, for our fans, and for us. I have thought about what life would be like if I was born without a cleft palate and like maybe with like a full head of hair and um, I think I would be really boring. <laughs> the response was incredible. Our videos went viral, we got worldwide press, and fan mail flooded in from people wanting to help and participate. Underneath every person's clothing, no matter how different we might appear, lies a universal struggle for self-acceptance. And true self-acceptance is the bravery to be in this world exactly as you are and not in the image of others. In my body is a good place to be because functionally speaking, I know at the end of the day that it's the only home I've ever had and it's the only home I ever will have. It's a good place to be because I'm cooking this guy. My body is my connection to my family. My, my body is my dad, you know? I'm not going to go back to being anyone's doormat and I'm not going to go back to being sick. I'm just going to move forward and this is who I am. So if you're different, that's sunlight in somebody's world. 
What's Underneath is on its way to becoming a global movement. We will be recording stories in cities around the world and creating opportunities for you to participate and share your truth. Tune in for a new episode every Monday, spread the word to your friends and loved ones, and follow us on social media for updates on how you can use your voice to make a difference. We all have the right to a healthy self-image. No Photoshop. No facade. No judgment. And y'all, if we do that, maybe we realize how connected we all really are. It's time for the people to decide what's beautiful. It's time to reclaim our identities. what's behind something. And it really is the story. It's always the story.